Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for choosing us, Lord. Thank you for calling us to be your children. Because your word says your sheep hear your voice. And another one's voice they will not listen to. They hear your voice. We hear your voice, Lord, calling out the urgency that you're coming back. You are coming back to get ready, to get ready, to get our families ready, to get the world ready so you can reveal yourself to us so we can reveal you to the world the real jesus the loving jesus the merciful jesus the kind jesus not the law all does not mix with water and grace does not mix with the law we thank you for sending your holy spirit to live in us to transform us not to shame us just to transform us to easily urge us to change to become more like christ until the day he returns transforming us from glory to glory lord we thank you for putting your treasure in us your holy spirit and fire thank you for that lord i ask that you watch over everyone at the park lord let me hook up this camera i forgot to hook up the camera thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus i bind up every unclean spirit trying to stop god block god or hinder god out at this park or in mccullough county I command you back to the pit in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is on you. You have to leave. Loose God's children. Your legal assignment is canceled. It was canceled 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. You have to go in Jesus' name. They've opened their eyes to your scheme, Satan. You must go in Jesus' name. Loose God's children now in Jesus' name. You can't torment them anymore. You can't steal from them. You can't kill from them. You cannot destroy from them anymore. In Jesus' mighty name, the blood of Jesus is on you. Loose God's children now. We just prayed. I forgot to hook the camera up. Father, bless them in the name of Jesus. Bless anybody watching. Bless anybody that is sick and suffering. Lord, heal them right now. In Jesus' mighty name, I speak for them to be healed. Any pain must go in Jesus' name. Jesus bore all their sickness. Jesus bore all their pain on the cross. And you have to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So we just did a, a live 10 days in a row, and it blessed me so much being obedient to God. I think God is using me as a uh, model of being obedient because he's got a a call on all of us all of us every single one of us he's got a call on our life he doesn't want us to feel condemned he wants us just to feel convicted chuck will you straighten that a little bit i'm a little bit crooked over here um but he's got a call on all of us he don't want us to feel condemned he wants us just to hear him he's calling us all satan raised up an army and now god's raising up an army God's raising up an army. Chuck, that's too close because I'm, I'm. God is raising up an army for to for He's revealing Himself to us so we can go out and reveal Him to the world, the true Jesus. There are too many people that are preaching His word for money. They're preaching it for gain, and the 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 king of this world, the enemy, Satan, has blinded them. See, that's what happens whenever we have wrong motives. We get blinded. And that's what Satan has done to God's children. And God wants us to help open their eyes. You know, they're, they've they been blinded by the enemy. By the enemy, money. Money has blinded God's children. Let me find this first. Second Corinthians four four. So God is trying to reveal Himself to His babies. We grew up learning that there was a God. Praise the Lord! Imagine how hard it would be for someone who didn't grow up learning about God to to find God. And we've got to figure out a way to get to these people because they're such a perishing generation. There's a whole generation that is perishing due to lack of knowledge. Just due to lack of knowledge. So there's a there's a generation that started off in the right way, and then they got drugged. I had no idea I was going to talk about this. 
um, they got drug off by money, by the things of this world that have drug God's children off. Because this this earth right now, the Satan is the god of the air. air. He's the he's the ruler of the earth right now. He's the ruler, and um, and and so many of God's children started off right, and then the the thought of getting rich, the thought of living a life of luxury has taken them out of God's will because God where he guides he will provide it might come slow but he provides it might come slow it might not come like we want it it might not be in a air jet plane it might not be in a Ferrari but he's coming he will show up and he will provide for our needs like he provided for the Israelites in the desert with the manna and they were complaining and then he gave them quail and then they ate too much and then they kept complaining and then he even used them as an example to us that complaining is such a sin that 14,700 of them died in one day in one day and they died as a example for us now hopefully they get to go to heaven oh lord but could you imagine that complaining is such a sin that it brings us out of the God's will? And this year is the year 5783 in the Hebrew, um, on the Hebrew calendar. And every Hebrew uh, letter has a numeric value and all of that. And it's like pay and gimel. And it's talking about our mouths and, and what we speak. And God's beautifying the bride. He's beautifying what comes out of our mouths. So Satan, it says right here, it says... And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So the the brothers, the unbelievers, they really think that God is some stony figure up in heaven because they've seen so many gods all throughout their life. They've seen so many gods, the TV gods, the the gods at the nail salon, the gods at the Chinese restaurant, all those gods, they literally think that God is a God like those gods. God is not. He's alive and well. I if I get to feel him. You know, that one time I keep telling y'all about, I was going down the hall and God told me it was a couple of months after we st started coming, living in faith, started coming to the park. And um, he said, you're adopted. You're a daughter. And he flooded me with love. And that love has taken me through the death of my dad. That love's taken me through every time my husband tells me you're right. That love's taken me through every fit my kid has. That love has taken me through everything and taken me into his glory every day. And sometimes when I wake up, I don't feel him. Sometimes I don't feel him. But he wants me to not go by what I feel. He wants me to go by by what his word says he left me this letter he left me this precious book of instructions and it's his words it's his letter and it transforms me every day i behold jesus in this letter i change i transform i become like him more and more every day it didn't happen like a microwave woof poof deliverance and that's why we have to let god change our brothers you know i love the story that um that brother TJ tells about the the prostitute that comes. They put on thirty thousand dollar revival events, and um, and they have food, they have clothes, and all these people from the highways and byways they come to the events, and then they get saved. The glory of God falls on the hungry. He falls, and he touches you. He lets you have that experience of feeling him. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then you're just hungering and thirsting for the next time you can get that feeling that next time that you get to feel God. It's amazing. But the girl comes and she gets saved. Well, the next day, she's not necessarily going to come back dressed like me. The next day, she might still be wearing her same outfit. And it's not our job to criticize her and it's not our job to judge her because we're taking a god off the throne putting ourselves on the throne that's the holy spirit's job our job is to love that's our job that's it our job is to we owe no man nothing except for the love of christ to turn the other cheek and once you've done that enough god will come in 
and he will he will flood you with his love and he'll tell you like he told jesus when jesus was baptized and the dove descended and said this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased that was like god telling me i was an orphan that was like god telling me in the in the hallway you're adopted you're a daughter and that man flooded me with the feeling the love it was the most amazing glorious experience but i don't always feel I don't always feel God. So he's been teaching me this week that when I wake up and I'm acknowledging Holy Spirit's in me. Because Jesus died to give us all the Holy Spirit. So he's in us all. The Holy Spirit's in us all, working in us, transforming us. But if you go to a birthday party and nobody acknowledges you all day, will you go back? Well, the Holy Spirit's still in there. He's just not. You're just not acknowledging him. So he's just like going. He's You're putting him to sleep. Your, your flesh is getting big. Your spirit is getting little, and you're just putting them to sleep. So, um, you gotta, this word is what's gonna wake up your Holy Spirit. Love, the truth in love, this word in love, because remember the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So, God's, God, all the, every, every church in Revelation was doing something wrong. They forsook love, they were having an affair with, uh, what is it? Um, the luxuries of life. And these are bad things for the for the church to be doing. So God's raising up. He told me he's pouring out his glory on all the world. I was getting a little bit jealous and I was in the tented bed and I was praying and God told me he was pouring out his glory on all men, all people. And that he was flooding the earth with his glory. And that's what he's doing. It says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will see visions. Even your maids and manservants will have the spirit. So we've all got the spirit. So we've all got like a blue wolf and a white wolf inside of us. And whichever wolf we feed is the wolf that's going to win the fight. So if we're let the Satan, the God of this world, he's, his throne is here. He's feeding our minds with so much, so much. Every, even advertisements, when you're watching a preaching show, even the advertisements that come up on the commercials are demonic. Um, and, and it's what goes into our eyes that defiles us and comes out of our mouth. Whatever we behold, we're going to say you know, the, the four angels that are in heaven that are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They're covered with ears, even their, I mean, eyes, even their ears have eyes. So God's glory is so amazing that as they're looking upon his glory, they continue to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And and once once you've shown God that you love the son, that you believe that he's a real real he was made a real sacrifice that he was a real person he lived he died for us he was a hundred percent god hundred percent man you believe in your heart you confess with your mouth you get the holy spirit the first indwelling of it when jesus blew on the disciples and said here's the holy spirit then he told them go wait in jerusalem for 10 days and you're going to get another holy spirit you're going to get the holy outer anointing that's going to help you go and preach to all four corners of the earth and this is for us all guys this is for all of us this isn't just for the apostles or anything like that you know brother josiah that joins us on the lives every um tuesday and thursday every tuesday and thursday but we've been doing that 10 day prayer he as a child he said that he would take a, a little red thing that was out of a cereal box it was like some kind of um little thing you put up to your eye and he would say Jesus is coming Jesus is coming God put that in his heart as a little child isn't that amazing how God puts himself in our hearts he picked us we didn't pick him he picked us he picked us he loved us first that's how come we can love him he picked us before the foundations of the earth Ephesians 1 and chose us predestined us our inheritance is the Holy Spirit John baptized with water, Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And and he picked us, guys. He picked us. That's what makes it able for us to love him and do for him because he saved us. Do you know what what the what the 
where we were bound, where we were going because of our ancestor, Adam and Eve. We were bound to go to hell and, and, and God picked us. He predestined us to come to come and be with him. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Speak through me. Give me words of knowledge to bless the brothers and sisters, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the brothers and sisters. Lord, just speak through me. Think through me. None of me. All of you. I humble myself so that you can use me, Holy Spirit. Um, the story of the uh, the first evangelist, I like to call her, the late the Samaritan, the lady at the well. Um, the, the Jews used to walk around there because the Samaritans were kind of wild and they wouldn't even go through there. But Jesus, at one point, he was like, we're going through there. And um, I want to read y'all that story. It's in John 4, 1 through 12. <clears throat> I'm going to start at 4. And so they had left Judea and then departed again for Galilee. And usually they'd go around that area. But this time he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria and called Sychar near the field of Jacob where he had, where Jacob had given Joseph, his son Joseph. Whoops, sorry guys. Jacob's well was there. I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, sitting beside the well, it was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is that that you ask a Jew, you a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink. He would have asked him and he would have given you living water and the woman said to him sir you have nothing to draw water with and he said and the well is deep where do you get living water are you greater than our father Jacob he gave us the well and drank from it himself As did his sons, his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty and have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying you have no I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship, you worship what you do not know. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here. Father, I bind up every demonic power, every unclean spirit, every principality trying to stop God, block God, or hinder God. I command it back to the pit in Jesus' mighty name. Anything trying to stop God must go out now in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is on you, Satan. You have to flee in Jesus' name. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know the Messiah is coming. And he who is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who you speak, I who speak to you am he. And then his disciples came back and they marveled and that he was talking with a woman and no one had said, but no one said, 
what do you seek or why are you talking to her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to all the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of town and they were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. The disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to accomplish his work. Wow. Do you not say there are four yet four months, then it comes to harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white with a, for harvest. Already, the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here is the saying that holds true. One sows and another one reaps. I sent to you to reap for you, that for you which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Sumerians from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony, and he told them, and he told me all I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. Because of who? The evangelist who went and told her testimony. The Samaritan woman who was married five times. Is that not amazing? That's amazing. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God's power is so mighty, guys. His power is, is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's in everything. He can go through the live stream and, stream and heal you. Um, the sister at the tanning bed, when I went back up there, God wants us. You know, every everyone's already planted. All that law they preach, when they see the true love of Jesus coming out of us, they are going to truly repent. They're going to see the real Jesus and the living epistles that we are. And and we are going to reap the harvest that they work. They've, they've planted the field and we get to reap it. Praise the Lord. And then when you get to heaven, you're going to have a line of people saying, thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that was changed because of you, because you gave, because you counted it all joy to suffer for Christ's sake. You counted it all joy. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? So what if they throw tomatoes at me? So what if they spit on me? So what if I'm not cool? So what? Jesus empowers me with the Holy Spirit. And He's proud of me. And my Father's proud of me. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what gives me joy. The fact that God's happy with what I'm doing. You know, there's going to be many that stay, say on that day, Lord, Lord. And only the ones who do the will of the Father are the ones to get into heaven and he's predestined us since before the foundations of the earth for a destiny for each one of us jeremiah 29 11 says for i know the plans i have for you plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you a future and a hope an expected end and he's got that all planned out for us and the devil would love nothing more than for us to be bellow and smoke out of our bodies for all of eternity you know the, in Revelation, the one who um, gave herself a life of luxury, it, I think it's talking about America, the great Babylon, you know, the great woman in, in Revelation, I think 16 or 18, it's talking about all of eternity, she's going to smoke. I don't want to smoke for eternity, not when there, Jesus paid the price for us to be in heaven. Come on by. You're good. You're good. Jesus paid the price. You can come by. Um, for us to be in heaven. We just hope that you hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, he paid the price so that we don't have to be bellowing smoke, guys. We don't have to bellow smoke for all of eternity. So Jesus said the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and the truth. Wow. We are hungry for you, Lord. That's where God moves more, hungry for him. And, um, and it only takes two or three gathered in, in his name. There he is in their midst. You know, all the, dis all the disciples were gathered for 10 days. And um, the Holy Spirit and tongues of fire fell. And God's pouring that out right now on all of us. Praise the Lord. Um, it's like us humans think that suffering and pain are bad and ease is good. But 
Remember Jesus said he hadn't yet got glory? Well, his glory was to actually suffer. The glory, when Jesus' glory was revealed, it was actually in suffering. When, when we're suffering, we realize, like that song we sang, um, then all of a sudden we're unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. We realize how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. That's where we see Jesus is in the suffering, you know. Um, in the afflictions of God's glory is where God's, in the afflictions, that's where God's glory shines the brightest, when a lame man walks, when a blind man sees, when the addict is delivered, praise the Lord, thank you for setting me free. It's time like this that Jesus' glory peeks out for all to see. His glory blazes all at once and the power of Satan and sin are broken. Sin is atoned and men and women are set free. Like the sister at the tenor bed, I prayed for her thyroid. Her thyroid is healed. She chased me out of the building the next day. Thank you, God, for that prophet that anointed me to told me so that I would seek God's word 12 years ago. But it's not just for me, guys. It's for all of us. We're all supposed to be little Jesuses. Jesus told the disciples, it's better for you if I go because in the spirit can be in all of you. So God's spirits in all of us. And, and then this, they sent the 72 out. Well, in Luke 10, in Luke 10, they sent the 72 out. And, and then that 72 should have multiplied to 140. And then that 140 should have multiplied to 280. And then, so here's this scripture. It says, the 72 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you nevertheless do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven in the same hour he said thank you father lord of heaven and earth that you have hidden these things from those who are wise and clever and revealed them to the humble and the childlike father for such was your gracious will all things have been handed over to me by the Father, and I know one, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone who the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you, are, what you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you all see, and did not see it and hear what you hear and did not hear it oh praise the lord guys we get to see on youtube all the demons trembling on the videos and and they are subject to us and then as soon as they were so proud that those demons were trembling in his presence in their presence and subject to the name of jesus jesus said lord father lord supreme i thank you have hidden these things from those who are wise and clever and revealed them to the humble and childlike that's the ones who are showing the world the love of Jesus. That's blessed are the peacemakers. You know, after Jesus started casting out demons in Matthew, um, he was having revival. I think it's Matthew 5. He stopped and gave the Beatitudes in the middle of all of it. He stopped and he gave the Beatitudes. And you know why? Because he wants us to know that our character is what is the main thing. How we treat one another. That they will know us by our love. And, and the world has gotten us so hard-hearted, so crusty-hearted. We've got calluses on our hearts. Our faith has been shipwrecked. Our consciences are seared. And there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't let the devil stop you from telling your going out and proclaiming the gospel. Believe me, people try to stop me because I'm a woman. Um, and, and you men, y'all got it way easier than I got it. Because y'all are men. People expect y'all to be preaching. People don't expect me to be preaching because they take because Satan knows the Greek and Hebrew better than all of us because he was like created on what the second day or the sixth day of creation and he knows the Greek and Hebrew better than all of us. Psalm says he knows the word better than all of us, and um, he he deceived Eve and he's deceiving many men who God have it to receive from a woman. They believe that women are supposed to be quiet. That's in the marriage. That is in the marriage when me and my husband get into a dispute. Instead of me trying to teach him, I go pray and the Holy Spirit will teach my husband. 
if you will look in the Greek word um, woman is wife the Greek word man is husband so the scripture in Timothy the scripture in, scripture in Corinthians it's actually talking about husbands and wives Paul goes on to commend many of his fellow servant women for their help in the ministry for their help so women don't be quiet whoever's telling somebody to stop preaching the gospel of God I feel sorry for you on Judgment Day. That's what I feel. I feel really worried about you on Judgment Day because God will not. Jesus said, there's neither Jew nor Greek, free nor slave, male nor female. That is the same spirit. Paul said it. It's the same spirit in all of us. It's the same spirit. So Paul is not a um, hypocrite. He was talking to the Ephesians. They were interrupting during church. You have to read the Bible. Context matters. So study to show yourself approved. A true workman rightly dividing the word. But he goes on to tell Timothy that all it takes to spread the gospel, you don't have to know the whole Bible. All it takes is love, the truth in love, not trying to prove somebody wrong. Because believe me, God will come down and confuse you in a mighty way, in a mighty second, in a minute, in a millisecond. Because I used to try to use this word to twist, twist it to make people do what I wanted them to do. And God would confuse me immediately. He would. And we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony that we love not our lives unto death. Unto death. So we don't care what other people think. We don't care what they think. So praise the Lord. Um, we all have a testimony. So many people can be saved by our testimony that we have. Um, the sister at the tenant, but I really want her to tell her testimony. She told me last week, this was three months ago, God healed her thyroid. And her thyroid, guys, she used to have to take medicine for that. Well, she's healed. She said she did the Kato diet for um, for two, and her two people in her family lost 60 pounds each, and she lost one pound. This was her testimony about three days ago. She said she's lost 30 pounds since God healed her thyroid. That is amazing. See, Holy Spirit, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, because he's going to authenticate his word. He's going to back up his word when you're genuine, when you're out, when you're sharing the gospel and you're genuine and you're not doing it to, for, for a show. He wants our faith to rest on his power, not wise and persuasive words. Too many preachers are famous. He won't, we're, we're here to make Jesus famous, not us. We need to be making Jesus famous. And the Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants to glorify Jesus. So, and God will provide wherever he guides us. It might not be in a Ferrari Testarossa or whatever it's called. But I, he will provide. He provides. He's. I lived a life in the belly of a well where God, I was running from God. And my life has been really hard all my life, even as a child. And, um. And now that I'm in the rhythm of God and his great orchestrated symphony and I'm in the tick of the rhythm of God, everything is so much easier. Even going live for 10 days in a row, even even homeschool in the kindergarten. This is the easiest thing I've ever done because his grace empowers me. He gives me the power to carry out the new desire that he's given me. And right now I pray, Father, Lord, give them all new desires, Lord. Father, open their eyes. May the scales come off. May the calluses come off their hearts, Lord. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Convict hearts, Lord, that you will bring them into holiness. You will, but not overnight. That As long as they're like a fish swimming upstream against the current, trying to lay aside every weight that hinders them to run their race well, not to stop going from going and sharing confessing with their mouth that Jesus is Lord because that's what the devil's great scheme is to keep them quiet Lord I bind up every every demonic attack on these children of God anything trying to torment them anything trying to stop block God block God or hinder God in their lives anything trying to kill steal and destroy from them to make them everlasting smoke flames Lord I bind it now and I command it back to the pit our prayers are spiritual heat-seeking missiles that speak, seek out every demon to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. And it cages them up with the blood of Jesus. And they have to obey. They have to. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for touching them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Flooding them with this liquid love. 
how what their belovedness is. That I pray that they all have the kingly spirit that they are. They are kings in the in the family of God. They are little Jesuses. And their inheritance is to be set free, delivered, healed. Their inheritance is to be rich in heaven, rich in love. Everything they give up here, they're gonna they're gonna get back a hundred times over in heaven. Lord, I thank you for the brother of with off the curve ministries that that doesn't get paid for his YouTube channel. Father, bless him double for his trouble in Jesus' name. Bless him double. And I want to read y'all one more scripture in Revelation. Because this is what, this is, God had his, his great plan's not over yet. It's not quite over. It's, it's about to get, he's waiting for the full number of Gentiles to come in so he can open the Israelites' heart. And because this is what's going to make them jealous. And then all of the earthquakes and the floods all around the earth. God has transformed me slowly, slowly, slowly. In February, he dropped, I dropped medical marijuana. Thank you, Jesus. In the Zoom call, in the stand-up tanning bed, praying with Daniel Adams. And I wasn't even the one being called, but God knew my heart. Because I said, how can I do this? And my husband believed you're powerful, God. And he took it. And as soon as I was driving home, there were six deer running beside my truck. And I said, now I know how Noah must have felt when the animals started coming. He was like, thank you, Jesus. I did the right thing. So right here in Revelation 12, 7, it says, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back. And he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down. This is why the devil's tormenting us, guys. Go to Job. Go to Job. And the great dragon was thrown down, and the anxious serpent, who is called the devil, and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down into the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation of the power of and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have been conquered. Who accuses them? Don't listen to the accuser, guys. God does not work in shame and condemnation. He does not. The power of God is not going to fall when hearts are feeling condemned. It won't. It will fall if they're feeling convicted, but not condemned. The power of God is love. God is love. There's nothing bad in him. It's all good. He wants us to be holy enough to be in his presence. So he gave us Jesus to make us holy. We are perfect in God's sight through Jesus. We're perfect. We have nothing, not a blemish, nothing. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ. That's what I was talking about last week. So it says, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, you who will dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. So, guys, don't forsake your testimony. Your testimony is your deliverance. The more you tell it, the more you get delivered like an onion in layers. It comes, it's not a microwave thing. It's glory to glory to glory. He gives you grace upon grace upon grace. And the more you act it out, the word of God, you see it and do it, the more it becomes real, the more it becomes alive. The word of God is alive, sharper than any double-edged sword cut between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. Cuts in the inner man, we have our Holy Spirit, but in our outer man, we have all of them personalities and, and spirits that we've kicked up throughout our lives and from our ancestors because... Their sin let evil spirits get into us. And the Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, in those days, because of the anointing, that the yoke will be destroyed or the yoke will be removed and the burden be destroyed because of the anointing. He will remove the yoke. He will, in those days, because in those days, I remove the burden from their neck and the yoke from their shoulder because of the anointing. So it's like oxen that are yoked up. We are yoked up to sin. And, and God's going to remove that because of the anointing. He's doing it. When we see Catherine Crick, when we see Daniel Adams and people shaking in the power of God, I even see a new 
church that I haven't seen. And back in 1997, it was, um, it was, it was, um, they were, people getting set free, they get baptized. What was the name of that church, baby? Brownsville. Brownsville in Pensacola, Florida. Guys, go watch the baptisms. As soon as they went under, they, they got baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They live with Christ, they die with Christ. As soon as they come up, they had to have somebody dragging them out because they were, the demons were coming out of them. And the Bible talks about that. Out of 21 miracles that Jesus did, seven of them was casting demons out. And I thank you for setting me free because whom's been forgiven much loves much. Guys, I love y'all. I pray that y'all go out and y'all share your testimony this week. Because if we hang somebody out of an airplane at 3,000 feet and then tell them they're saved from their own sins, it's not as effective. That's the old covenant. We're under the new covenant. The new covenant is we've overcome by the blood of lamb, the word of our testimony. We love our brother. So we tell them the worst thing we've ever done and what God saved us from. And that's how we overcome. That's how we overcome, guys. And we got to lose our pride. We got to lose our dignity. We got to lose that and say, God delivered me from uh, this addiction, that addiction. God delivered me from this and that because people think, Oh, they were made better overnight. I can't do that. I can't. That's not how they do that. Why is God doing that for them and not for me? Some people he might do that for, guys. But I'm telling you, it has been like a fish swimming up water upstream for me. And it, we've got to be honest and we've got to be, uh, what is it, authentic and be truthful. The truth in love. So there's no condemnation of those who are in Christ. I hope nobody's feeling condemned. Um, and we can't mix law with grace, guys. We're under the new covenant. Jesus is full of grace so and mercy. And we got to be full of grace and mercy. So I pray right now that we bring revival to the nation and salvation floods the streets in Jesus' mighty name. That y'all go out to the highways and the byways and proclaim, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. That you tell your testimonies. That you overcome the dragon. That you overcome the antichrist. By the, by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb, I pray that you start walking in your authority, that you guard the words of your mouth, that you don't speak death, that you don't come out of the will of God with your words. I pray you speak only faith. I pray even when you don't feel it, that you believe that He's working. I pray for you to have the faith of Jesus that Jesus gave you. I pray that you will begin to acknowledge the Holy Spirit that's inside of you everywhere you go every day. The Holy Spirit, if Jesus can't watch it, don't watch it because he's in there with you. And if you want him to grow in you, you can't watch it. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the brothers and the sisters, Lord. I ask that you give a special blessing to the ones that are here, Lord, for coming. Thank you for encouraging me because it helps me so much. I thank y'all. I thank everybody for watching. I ask that the Lord gives everyone that is subscribed to the channel the most perfect, sweet peace. And he floods them with his liquid love. And he helps them throughout the week and gives them blessing upon blessing and grace upon grace. And their whole families are saved. And that none of them are sick in Jesus' mighty name. That none of them are hurt. None of them are suffering. That they take authority in Christ and speak life. And they bring their, their healing out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you all. Glory, all honor goes to you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with me through this. Go with them. Show them that when they open their mouth, you will feel it, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Amen.